So this is how the NMOS uh, transistor cross-sectional uh, structure looks like. We have a gate here. Uh, this one is a gate, this one is an oxide, and then we have the whole uh, P-type body. It's an NMOS transistor, it's a P-type body. Uh, for an NMOS transistor, it's a P-type body. For a PMOS transistor, it will be an N-type body. Right. So if I take this particular P-type body, what it really means is the majority carriers are actually uh, dominated by the P-type dopants. So if I introduce the boron or the gallium, then uh, I will have uh, the holes as the majority carrier. So that's what is represented in this uh, blue circle across this particular P-type body. Right. So these are the, uh, you know, this, this particular blue ones. That is what is called as the holes. So we have the holes as the majority carriers. So I'm just writing it down. And we also have the minority carriers as the electrons. So whenever we do, uh, um, we, we have an external dopants, uh, the holes will be there, but also there will be, uh, uh, you know, there will be a majority carriers because the holes which are being uh, brought from the external element uh, will be very, very useful for the connectivity. But also there are, there will be the minority carriers. The minority carriers are generated, uh, you know, uh, randomly due to the, uh, the thermal uh, energy at room temperature. So we will always have this uh, minority carriers. Uh, in, in this particular case, the, for the P-type, it will be the electrons. For an N-type, it will be the holes, right? So the minority carriers will be the other one, right? So for the P-type per dopant, we will have the electrons as the minority carriers and then holes as the majority carriers. Right, in this particular NMOS structure, uh, apart from the gate oxide and then the body, so this is nothing but the body. So somewhere here, I'll just write it down. That's right. Uh, to the corners at the surface and then towards the corners of this particular uh, uh, body structure, there will be a diffusion of N plus. Now remember N plus uh, is nothing but uh, the doping concentration of around 10 raised to 18 and uh, till 10 raised to 20 right per centimeter cube right so n plus has been introduced so a larger you know almost uh, a large concentration of uh, n plus uh, dopant uh, in n plus in the sense uh, phosphorus or uh, you know arsenic has been uh, diffused via the diffusion process or the implantation process and we'll get this uh, small uh, corner pockets uh, on this particular uh, cross sectional uh, area of the uh, of the p-type uh, silicon material. So we have this particular pockets. These pockets are called as the source and then the drain, right? So source as it, uh, you know, as uh, it means, it will, is going to source the majority carriers and then drain, it is going to drain away the majority carriers. So what it really means is um, the source is going to produce the majority carriers uh, or rather the you know it is going to generate the majority carriers and then these majority carriers should be collected at the drain side right at this particular point we don't have a direct channel or a connection between the source and the drain right although there will be a majority carriers at the source side there is no path for it to enter into the drain side right and hence an electric field is applied at the drain to source side. That's why I've, I've shown here the electric field, uh, the potential difference of VDS, uh, drain and source. But still, even after applying a, you know, a positive potential here, and then a negative potential here, there is no direct channel that, uh, you know, to connect or to make a path for the majority carriers at the source side to enter into the uh, drain side. Right, even though there is a uh, potential difference that has been applied from the drain to source side, uh, I'm saying that there is no path, there is no direct path. There may be a very, very minimal path where uh, it, it tries to flow. The current will be very, very minimal. But let's not uh, worry about that. But there is no, what I'm saying is whenever, even if I apply an electric field from the drain to source side, it doesn't have that much of a force. The electric field doesn't have that much of a force for it to attract the, you know, the, the majority carriers at the source side to be attracted to the drain side. Hence, a uh, you know, uh, so something needs to be introduced onto this uh, onto this region uh, beneath the oxide interface, and hence, an, uh, you know, an uh, L, uh, VGS, the gate to source voltage, is being applied now from the gate to the source side, right? Which will now have an electrical F, uh, field from the gate. So this gate is going to attract something. 
so that it forms a channel here connecting the source and the drain and thereby the source will source away the majority carriers of it and then the drain is going to collect it. Okay, so that's that's how the structure looks like and that's how the bias is applied. So one bias is the VGS bias, which is, um, you know, which, which is nothing but an electrical field. You know, the, the potential difference here, VGS is going to uh, produce or generate the electrical field, but that electrical field is a vertical electric field. The other, uh, you know, electric field, which is created by this potential difference of VDS, you know, that is a lateral electric field, right? So one is a uh, vertical electric field, the other one is a lateral one. Now here I have mentioned uh, three modes. One is the accumulation mode, uh, the depletion mode, and then the inversion region, right? The inversion region is where it forms a channel. Uh, and then th these are the three uh, different categories uh, where it forms, you know, where uh, based on the bias value, the VGS value, uh, you know, we can categorize into three different modes and we, we will uh, have a look at it, uh, what it really implies. Right. In the accumulation mode, uh, what it mentions is when the VGS is uh, smaller than zero, that means it is a negative uh, potential difference. That means the gate is negative with respect to the source. Right. What it implies is the gate is a negative potential and thereby the negative potential is going to attract uh, the holes here at the interface. So the P type body has the majority carriers as the holes and thereby the holes are kind of attracted at the interface completing the electric field, right? This uh, particular arrow starting from the holes, which is a positive carrier, and then ending at the negative one, the negative ions here, which are, uh, you know, um, um, are generated or, uh, you know, formed at this interface after the oxide. So this particular one, uh, due, to the, uh, due to the VGS, which is now a negative value. So the VGS is a negative value. So the gate will be negative with respect to the source. And thereby I have this particular negative ions, which is, uh, you know, which is there for completing this particular electric field. So this is called as an accumulation mode because the majority carriers of the P-type body, which is nothing but the holes are attracted at the interface. So they are getting uh, kind of accumulated at the interface, right? So in this particular mode, uh, there is no channel that is being formed from source to drain. So the electrons cannot flow here because the electrons will find the holes here. So the electrons cannot go there. Uh, no, what, what we are talking is, you know, this electrons which are generated, the majority carriers of the N plus dopant needs to be collected at the drain side. And that is not possible, right? Because of this uh, accumulated region, I cannot have this particular electrons move towards the drain side or collected at the drain side. Going ahead. So the next one is the depletion mode where the VGS value is uh, positive. So let me pick up a pointer. Okay, and so let me choose this. So VGS is uh, greater than zero. So uh, the VGS value is slightly higher than zero, but less than VT. That's what I have also written. So the VT is called as the threshold voltage. And we will come to it uh, in, a, in, a, in the next slide. So this is the threshold voltage. Uh, and uh, this is kind of characterized for every transistor. Uh, and what we are saying is that the, the VGS value is positive now, so that is good, but it is slightly greater than zero, but it is less than VT. So in that particular case, we have now slightly VGS which is positive, that means the gate is positive with respect to the source. So we have a positive ions here collected at the interface of the oxide, you know, on the gate side. So this is still the gate. So at the gate to the oxide, I have on one side, it is positive one. So it is likely to attract, uh, you know, it wants to attract the minority carriers, but, uh, you know, it wants to attract uh, an electron here. But P-type body, which is the majority carriers, is the holes. So it is not going to get attracted here, right? So this holes is going to push away uh, this particular hole. So this particular holes are getting pushed away because of the positive voltage here. Whereas the minority carriers in this particular P-type body, which is nothing but the... Uh, uh, the electrons, uh, right? So the electrons are going to, uh, you know, it is kind of getting attracted, but it is still the voltage value or the electric field is not high enough so that the minority carriers will get stacked at the interface. So it is not still not high enough so that uh, the electrons, the minority carriers of the p dye body goes and moves to this particular and sits on this particular interface, thereby forming the electric field. So that doesn't happen yet. 
right? So the VGS value is uh, positive, but it is not good enough to attract the minority carriers at the interface. So that is what uh, this region is. That is called it is uh, the depletion mode. The depletion mode also implies that because of this positive, uh, you know, the potential of the gate, it is going to move away the holes, making this particular region depleted of the carriers, right? Whether it is negative or positive, it makes it uh, this particular region uh, depleted. And what really happens, I've shown here the negative uh, immobile ions is the reason is nothing but the holes are going to move away leaving behind the atom, you know, the boron atoms or the gallium atoms because it's a p-type. Now, those atoms will now be uh, not be electrically neutral. It will be a negative immobile ion. And that's what it is represented here in the negative and then the circle uh, of that. Right. So this, uh, this is what it happens. So it becomes depletion. You know, this particular region of the oxide interface will be depleted of the carriers. And that's why it is called the depletion region or the depletion mode. Right. The last one is called as an inversion region. It is of uh, significant interest. Uh, if we apply the voltage VGS uh, greater than or equal to VT, right? Greater than or equal to VT. So VT is a threshold uh, voltage. Then it has, so what it really means is the VGS value is now greater than or equal to VT. That means it will have a positive potential uh, greater than VT if the source is grounded. So if the VGS value now is going to have a positive potential on the gate side, which is now enough to attract the minority carriers, minority carriers in the p-type body, which is the electrons closer to the interface. And once it goes closer to the interface, the channel from the source, right? The channel from the source to the drain is completed, right? This particular electrons, right? The three electrons, which I had shown, right? Forms an electric field because uh, now this particular potential uh, you know, the positive potential at the gate side is going to uh, attract this uh, minority carriers of the p-type and forms the electric field and uh, makes this channel intact. This particular, this particular channel, you know, which uh, forms a path connecting the source to the drain allows the majority carriers of the source through this path to enter into the drain side. Right, and that's what I've written here, the minority carriers forming the conducting path. And this path allows the free electrons, uh, free electrons from the source side to move to the drain side. And thereby, so the electrons flow from uh, source to the drain. So this is the direction. So thereby the current direction should be nothing but the drain to the source. 